Hello, my name's Nell. Today we'll be doing an all over body workout on the Cadillac trapeze table for beginners. I've been teaching these programs for 15 years and they successfully progress you through the Pilates repertoire. I really hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Spine curls with the lat pulls and pulses. Feet are sit bone width apart. You're gonna tuck your tail under, lift up as you pull your arms down and then roll back down, return to neutral. Breathe out to imprint, lift the pelvis, lower the arms, inhale, pause, and then exhale, roll back down, returning to the start position. Feeling the back of the legs, lift the pelvis up, opening the front of the hips. Really reaching the knees away from the hips, pressing the arms down from the mid-back muscles and the back of the shoulders. When you tuck and scoop, keep hollow in the belly. And as you roll the lower spine down, try and hollow out the belly as well so the belly doesn't bulge. So our target area is the back of the legs, the back of the arms and the shoulders. Keep the ribs down as you lift up. Pressing through the heels to activate the back of the legs and then pulse. So you hold the pelvis still in space reaching through the fingertips, reaching through the inside thighs, pressing through the heels, collarbones away from the ears, neck is long at the back, pause, and then return back to the start position. Triceps, elbows are bent in by your ribs, you straighten and bend your arms. The scapula is in neutral, so the middle border of the scapula is only a couple of inches apart really imprinting your shoulder blades back and down as the challenge here is you straighten your arms. Pelvic floor navel to spine and then return the arms. Let go of the springs. You can actually do that with a spring bar as well. Roll like a ball prep, you know, or pardon, so roll like a ball. So just tapping the toes very lightly. This is not about strength, this is about mobility. Imprinting the lower back back, lead with the crown of the head. Engaging the glutes as you go back, engaging the core as you come forward. And then into studio stretch with a flat back extension. So from neutral, C curve through the spine, the hands slide down to your feet, breathe into pause, lengthen through the spine, and then curve, imprint your lower back, and then rolling up from there. Inhale, and then exhale, C curve forward, imprint the lower spine back. Elongate, flat back onto the diagonal, and then imprint your lower spine back, and then rolling back up, keeping the deep abdominals engaged. It's like you're going up and over a picket fence, and then elongate from your sit bones, and then imprint your spine back as you draw your ribs to your hips and then rolling back up. Inhale, open your chest. Exhale, imprint. Lengthen. Curve. And then imagine you're pressing your spine into a wall behind you as you lengthen up. Curl backs with the hands behind your thighs. You're gonna roll back onto your sacrum or onto your lower back and then forward, rolling back and then forward, breathing out to roll back, keep the chest lifted, the eye line up and then inhale, roll forward. Exhale, tuck, the back of the legs are engaged, you can poke into your hamstrings to feel the hamstrings engaged there. So the hamstrings and the glutes are lengthening the lower back and the lower abdominals are scooping in and up. So curl ups with single knee floats, hands behind your head, elbows slightly lifted, lift one leg up and then back down, lift the other leg up and then back down, lift your chest and then lower down, lifting up. Inhale, lift one knee up, keeping the hips very still, exhale, place it down, inhale, lift, exhale, place it down. Lift and then almost lower the hands down to the bed to then lift up again. So the challenge here is not to rock your pelvis left and right as you float your legs up. So it's a pelvic stability exercise as well as a abdominal strengthening. Really flexing so that you're lifting your shoulder blades up, pivoting around the tips of your shoulders. Lift and then back down, almost touch the table. 
and then lifting up. Keep an eye on your belly, keep the belly flat. Pelvic floor is lifting. Ribs to hips. Keep the pelvis and the lower spine in neutral so there's a slight little gap in the lower back. And then obliques in figure four. So you're going to press your hand into your knee, press your knee into your hand and again hand to knee, knee to hand and slightly release. Lift, press, scoop, slightly release. Press through the hand, press through the knee, draw the belly down again. So we're drawing the left rib towards the right hip, keeping the hips even. Really feeling the obliques working as you press the hand and the knee against one another. And then switching legs and arm. So you lift up. So both shoulders are lifted, right shoulder blade up more. And then you press, press, scoop, release slightly. Press, press, scoop. Upper obliques, lower obliques, deep abdominals. Breathe out and in, breathe out. It's like you're pushing the knee away and up and then the knee is pressing into the heel of the hand. Pressing from the abdominals rather than the neck and the upper shoulders. Knee floats, up, up and then both down. So lift the elbows up, cradle the head, lift up and then float one leg up followed by the other and then both legs evenly down. One leg up followed by the other. Try and alternate which leg you lift up first and breathe out to lower. Breathe in, in and out to lower. You can do this in neutral, otherwise if you're not strong enough you can imprint your lower back and tuck your tail up until you've got your abdominal strength and then you can do it in neutral. So hip rolls with one leg extension, grab hold of the poles and lift the knees up, legs are together, inhale roll, exhale straighten the top leg, inhale bend, exhale return, imprint the right shoulder blade down, reach the top leg out, bend and return, press the left shoulder down, reach the leg out, bend and return, inhale, Exhale, inhale, now move from your lower abdominals so the abdominals rotate you, then engage the thigh and the belly and then press lower ribs, mid ribs down into the carriage, into the table. So lower ribs, mid ribs, press them down, lift the hip up, lengthen the leg out and then rib waist, hip to return, really initiating from your abdominals not just rolling the legs over and then place one leg down followed by the other. Roll onto your side, you might want to check your program. Now we have hip flexor off the bed so you side onto the bed, grab hold of your foot and then gently press the foot into your hand. Try and imprint the lower spine towards the floor just to help you to remain in a neutral position. You're tucking the tailbone up and then roll onto your side and then the other side. So you're on the side of the table. Grab your foot and if you can't quite hold onto your foot you can either let the leg dangle down and get a stretch there or maybe put your foot against the floor and stretch your quad in this position but with your foot down. Or you might want to hold on to a strap. Placing the hand on the belly, getting that scoop in and up, breathing into the rib cage, expanding the ribs. And then we're going into beginner kneeling arm springs. So using the same springs, or you could use a um, spring bar as well. We're going to do lap pull with rotation. So you're standing up on your knees, pull your arms by your side a few times, and then right arm and then left arm. So both arms and then the left side, left and right. 
So you're imprinting the shoulders in the back of the arms and then the left shoulder blade and obliques, right shoulder blade and obliques. The challenge here is to stay in a neutral position whilst you're on your knees. So you've got to really imprint the pubic bone forward, feeling the sit bones draw down to the back of the knees, lifting up and out of your pelvis. And then into triceps. So we'll do about five of these. So pressing the arms down, drawing your shoulders back and down and then return. The triceps, the back of the arms are working here, but mainly you'll feel your scapular muscles stabilizing you. And then we go into extension. So the arms go down, you lift your breastplate up and then return using your abs. You can draw your chin into your throat as well if it feels too necky going back. So you're lifting your breastplate up towards your chin, lifting the ribs at the front up and out of the pelvis and then ribs to hips to return. Otherwise, lift your head up, keeping your neck long and elongated. You want to be able to swallow and talk with your head going back. And we'll need to move the push through bar there. So make sure that's out of the way. Biceps in a hinge. So you're hinging back. Keep the elbows in line with the table. Looking down towards the pelvis can help. Feeling like you're tucking your pubic bone up towards your face to remain in a neutral position. The shoulder blades are abducted, so they're wide. The elbows are reaching forward. Serratus muscles are working and biceps. Hug a tree with a side reach. So turning around, once again kneeling up. Arms are out in peripheral vision. You'll feel like you're just ever so slightly leaning forward and then we rotate to one side with the hands together, laterally flex and then open. Using the abdominals in the chest, then laterally flex to the other side first and then to the right and then maintaining stability as you open. No rocking forward and back on the knees. Lift the left rib cage up, return using your waist. Lift the right rib cage up, return using the waist, reach the arms out from the deep abdominals, bring your hands together, the fingers are lightly touching, the elbows are wide like you're hugging a tree. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out and open. One more, this actually feels really nice on your spine. Beautiful opening through the hips as well. Push-ups. Imagine your hands are against a wall, the elbows are in by your side and you're just pressing forward and in. The elbows are down towards the floor but you can open them up about 30 degrees slightly out to the sides. Pressing with your chest and pressing the armpits down and then into zombies. So the arms go from horizontal to lifting up. Only within a range that you can keep still on your knees. Only within a range that you can keep your scapula abducting and laterally rotating. Co collarbones drop down as you lift and pressing your palms down from your abs. And then into single arm boxing. So this is a stability challenge here. Pressing from the core, your chest, and then into salute. So from the side of your temples there, reaching out to a V and then back to your skull. Reach out to a V and then back to your skull. From your core, you're straightening your arms. Abdominals, press the hands forward. Feeling the tips of your shoulders draw down and wide. Out through the mouth, in through the nose. So now we're going to do bottom loaded work, plies. Safety strap on first. Always do that before you put the bottom loaded springs on. Use a sticky mat so that your feet don't slide around unless you've got sticky socks. 
pull the spring and then latch it on. Then the other side. Checking the program here. Pelvis underneath the bar. We're going to do heels together, arches together, toes together, and then a V position. Legs are together, heels on the bar. Inhale, bend, and then exhale, press. Inhale, fold, exhale, straighten. As you straighten your legs, Imprint the lower back and press the thighs away from you. Imprint, press. Deep abdominal scooping. The hamstrings, the glutes are straightening your legs. Pressing the knees away from you. And then make sure that your knees stay together. And then arches. On the bar, wrap your toes around so you're strengthening the toes and the soles of the feet. And just bend and straighten within a range that you can keeping your knees and legs together, resist, press, resist, press. The palms are down, the shoulders are back, the neck is soft, the chest is open, the mid-back muscles are working and then toes, so your legs are together, wrap your toes around the bar and then reach through your feet, press and lengthen through your legs. Inside thighs press away from you, Keep drawing the legs together as you bend the knees. Working from the back of the legs and deep abdominals straight in the back of the legs. Press away, feel like you're lengthening up and out of the hips. V position, heels together, toes apart. And you're straightening your legs by drawing your legs together. Inside thighs and then Nice and relaxed in your hips. You might want to pause there for a moment, really squeeze the calves, the back of the legs towards one another. Out through the mouth, in through the nose. Keep pushing through the toes. Thighs, back of legs are working as well co-contracting the quads and the hamstrings. And then into calf rises. So with the toes on the bar, sit bone width apart, the heels are parallel. Exhale, push, inhale, flex. The whole time, energetically, you're pushing the back of the knees away from you, pushing the back of the thighs away from you. The thigh muscles are engaged, so squeezing the kneecaps up. This is quite intense with two springs on. If you feel like it's too much, then just one spring is plenty. And then as you build up your strength, add on that second spring. The spine is imprinting. The thigh bones are pressing away. And then into prances one at a time. Flex the heel up, flex the heel up. Really articulate through your feet. Really push the bar away from you as high as you can, like you're going up onto tippy toes. And then draw the bar towards you as best you can, really flexing the foot. It's pretty intense with two springs. Do what you can. Keep your face calm and your breath smooth. Now taking one spring off, or if you've just got one spring on, just keep the one spring and we'll do a single leg. So left foot on the bar, right leg out hovering off the table, and then you're going to bend and extend and then bend and return to the start position. Exhale, inhale, exhale, Inhale. If you've got the flexibility, then you reach the foot on the inside of the bar. Otherwise, you just reach the leg up towards the ceiling. The lower spine is imprinted. Keep pushing through the supporting leg of the bar. 
really lengthening through your leg, engaging your quads and then engage the back of the legs. Reach out through the legs and then stretching out through the hips. Such a beautiful feeling elongating through your body, through the arms, through the crown of the head, the spine. Swapping sides. So either reach the leg straight up on the outside or reach the leg on the inside, depending on your flexibility. Either one, you want to push through the bar toe, lengthening through the foot, stretching your body out, strengthening your thighs. So you're pressing the bar up with the back of the leg and then you're extending the left leg with your thigh and then the hamstring as you reach it out. The deep abdominals are scooping and imprinting your spine and the sit bones and your coccyx are reaching out and up slightly. Then into Jake the peg, the heel is in rotation. you need to rest just take a moment to breathe and relax then when you're ready put that safety strap or chain to the side slightly and then heels together in line with your pubic bone the legs are in external rotation straighten the bar leg and lift the hovering leg up and then lengthen out imprinting the lower back and then pressing through the back of the legs. So this is really getting into the VMO, muscle in your thigh, the muscle on the inside of the knee, and then think of the adductors, the inside thighs, lengthening you up and out of your pelvis. Tummy presses down, reaching the legs out. Soft neck, shoulders back and down. Switching legs. Start with the bar leg bent and the other leg hovering off the table. So when you lift up, it's like you're drawing your heels towards one another. The inside thigh muscles are sweeping towards one another, almost slicing against one another like scissors. Feeling the inside thighs engage like you would when you do frogs on the reformer. And then think of that left leg, the hovering leg, the back of the leg, pressing the leg down and reaching out. The neck is soft and your body, your face is relaxed. Then hopping out from underneath there, take the sticky mat off. You might want to check your program. And then we're going into side lie leg lifts. Breathing out to lift, into lower. Keeping the leg parallel. To keep it parallel, you'll need to think of lifting the heel up. The underneath side of the waist is really lifted up and it's the glute med and min that we're after here. And then kick forward and then point back. Thigh muscle and then hip extensors. Front of the leg muscles are engaged, back of the leg muscles. Don't worry about the range. This is about keeping your pelvis nice and steady and the underneath side lifted. So I want to be able to see sunlight underneath that side so you really feel your waist and your obliques working hard here without hunching your shoulders up. Keep the face relaxed and soft and the breath steady and strong. Really breathing out through the mouth to engage the deep abdominals. 
and then into circles. So it goes forward, up, back and down, forward, up, back and down, around the height of your sit bone and then up higher than your hip. Focusing on the sit bone, drawing back down towards your thigh to engage the back of the leg. This will help open up the front of the hip. Other side. So you might want to put that bar down. And then we're going into side lie leg lift. Lifting the top leg up, lowering it down. Lifting up, lowering it down. So think of the outside of the heel, the left heel lifting and then lowering. Lifting and lowering. Reaching the leg out, lowering it back down. The heel is in line with your sit bone. And then we go forward, keep the foot up in line with the hip, reach it back. Thigh and tummy, tummy and back a leg. Kick, kick, don't worry about the range. Focus on your stability and your torso. So your waist muscle lifting up nice and high, stabilizing through your torso. Breathing consistently, scooping the belly up as you reach the leg back. If you can hear a dog eating food in the background, that's my 17-year-old Staffy <laughs> eating her dinner. So um, please excuse that sound in the background. So now into circles. Keeping the underneath side lifted, reaching the heel out as you circle the leg around. The challenge here is to stabilize through your torso, through your waist, through your upper body, whilst you move your leg in space. Let's see what's next. Spring bar roll-ups. We want to use the heavy spring bar springs for the spring bar. You don't want it so strong that it's doing all the work from you and you're pulling against it too hard. But you definitely want it strong enough that you can scoop and hollow your belly out as you roll back and forward. Lift your head, roll, scoop the tummy and then rolling back onto the lower spine. Keep imprinting your lower spine as you imprint the shoulders back and then keep the lower abdominals engaged, scooping in so no bulging through your belly as you roll up and down. So this primarily educates your body to do a roll up whilst keeping the deep abdominals, transversus abdominis engaged by hollowing the belly out. If your belly is bulging, it means that transversus abdominis is disengaged. And then we do a little pulse on the way down and then a little pulse on the way up. That's four point roll up, scoop, hiss, keep the C curve and then tuck the tailbone up, pushing the heels down into the table. Try and imprint your lower back as you roll and then a little pulse, tapping the bra up and down and then curving forward, keep tucking the tail here. Again, pushing through the balls of the feet to get that length through the front of the hips. And if your belly's bulging and if you feel like it's too hard to lift up and down on your own, you probably need a heavier spring or you need to lift the bar up higher to assist you. Need quite a heavy spring for the spring bar roll ups. Then into rolling stomach massage one and two. We're doing double toe taps, legs over the bar, knees apart, feet together, and you're pressing the toes down and lifting up. So either feet together, I've got my feet apart here. Feet together is more of a modification. If you feel like the bar is going to slip, then put a sticky mat underneath the bar or just move the crossbar down a little bit to make the spring a little lighter and then imprint and tuck and then return. So you're in neutral here, back of the legs. Now keep the toes down, imprint and then return to neutral and then return. 
This is more like a brain exercise. It's about learning to hinge from the hips and then that co-contraction of the glutes and the tummy to elongate and stretch out your lower back and to open up the front of the hips. This leads into a much more advanced exercise down the track, so this is just preparing you for that. Here we tuck and lift. It will feel like the spring bar is going to slide underneath, like down to your bottom. Okay, we want to pinch the back of the knees, so squeeze the back of the knees like you're holding onto the bar with the back of the knees. Return to neutral and then hinge in the hips. Keep neutral, obliques working, and then tuck, imprint, and then lift to a point that you feel like you've got the bar underneath the back of the legs. Return and then lift. You might need to experiment with your spring tensions here or the height of the crossbar. You might want to have a little rest here, arms out to the side, breathing into the lower ribs, the mid ribs, the upper ribs, and then rolling onto your side. We're going to put the top spring on, the push through bar. So two blue springs here, but you can eat, you know, um, either have light or heavier or just one. So we're doing scapular depressions. It's a very small movement. Make sure you're sitting up on top of your sit bones. You can feel your abdominals working here as you imprint your spine back. So you're pulling your shoulders down and then you're drawing your shoulders up. Depressing the scapula, pressing the armpits down towards your thighs and then elevate the scapula. The scapula slide down and in towards one another and then they elevate tips of your shoulders towards one another and then into lap press. This is about keeping the scapula stabilized as you push the bar down and up. If this is too hard and you've really got to compensate, just make it a lighter spring, so one spring. Targeting the obliques, the abdominals and the mid-back, so it's a co-contraction of the mid-back muscles and your tummy pushing the bar down. It's actually quite hard to stay really stable through your torso here. If you're rocking forward and back, then you need to engage your core and your mid-back a little more. Push through one. Scapular depression, lat pull, and then imprint your lower spine back. Roll up, and then scapular stability. Press down. C curve, up and over. Keep that connection in your abdominals as you roll up and then lift the bar up. It's like you're pushing the bar down with your abs as you curve forward. The collarbones stay away from the ears but they reach forward slightly towards your toes. The shoulder blades widen as your arms reach forward and then they stabilise as you draw back. Side sitting one and two, sitting side on, hand in line with the shoulder. Once again one or two springs, so one, I'm going to make that a little bit lighter, that was a bit hard for me, I had to really compensate through there, pressing the bar down, lifting the outside arm up and then return. Armpit presses the bar down and then the left arm floats up, keeping the collarbones as still and as wide as possible, using the underneath of the shoulder blades, serratus, lats, lower trapezius muscles here. The challenge is to do this without rocking through your torso or lifting your collarbones up. And then the second one, you lift the hip up and then you lower the hip down, return and then up. So the start position is with the outside floating arm out parallel to the floor and you keep that 90 degree angle in that shoulder and then you go over, so you pull down using your armpit 
and then you go up and over without hunching and using the upper traps. Collarbones and shoulder blades still and then lateral flexion of the spine, really lifting the hip and then lower the hip down and then return. Keeping that outside arm at a 90 degree angle as you laterally flex and lift. Other side. So push through one. It is a little bit of a brain teaser, this one. So it starts from push through one, starts with the floating arm, touching the table and lifting up to 90. Touching the table, lifting the outside arm up to 90. The left armpit is drawing down the whole time and that's what pulls the bar down. Torso stability. So push through two, start with the arm out parallel to the floor. Then pull the arm down, keep the arm at 90 as you laterally flex up and over. And then you lift the hip and then anchor the hip down and then unravel through the spine and then return back to the start position, outside arm at 90. Lift and then anchor the hip down, unravel, return. Press the arm down, lift the right rib cage up as you go over to the left. Pressing the hand down into the bar to keep the collarbone away from the ear. Deep abdominals now as you go up and over. Sit bone, deep abdominals and then return. Lifting the rib cage up, pressing through the left arm down to activate that left side. actually feels really beautiful that exercise once you can get it out of your neck and only go within a range of course that you can keep good technique and you feel like you've got your strength and then as you build up your strength then you can increase the range just like any of the exercises supine scapular isolations the shoulders are underneath the bar scapular protraction back to neutral, protraction, back to neutral. The arm bones reach out from the shoulder joints and then the shoulder blades draw back. Arm bones reach forward and then the arm bones imprint back. Arm bones, shoulder blades, shoulder blades, arm bones. And then supine push through. Elbows reach. The challenge here is to reach your arms over your head without flaring your rib cage up and using your spine. So feeling your corset muscle here, keep them, keeping the ribs down and the spine stable. The other challenge is reaching the arms over the head without using the upper trapezius. So whilst you're lying on the back, and this cue might not work for everyone, as your arms go over your head, think of imprinting your armpits up towards the ceiling slightly. Now moving back, we're going into mini pulses and obliques. So your head's sort of in line with the edge of the table, you're lifting up, curving. With two springs on here, it really helps you lift and curve through the spine. Put your left hand over to the right, right hand behind your head. Now it's the left shoulder blade lifting up higher than the right. Left rib cage to right hip. Hips are stable and then the other side. Allowing the springs to lift you up and curve but you're thinking of the abdominals doing all the work. A little bit more of a challenge, you can make that lighter spring by putting just one spring on. And then Lamon sit up one and two. Roll up and then roll back. Breathe out to roll up. Breathe into pause and then breathing out to roll back. Imprint the lower back. As you roll up, you want to be at the back of your coccyx and your sit bones there. 
imprint in the lower back there. So the pelvis still remains tilted and tucked here. And then tuck it even more as you roll back down to imprint the lower back. Now reach one leg out and then roll back down, imprint. Lift, reach the other leg out at a height that feels good for you. It doesn't matter how high or low the leg is. It's a pelvic stability challenge. One of the hardest things is to roll back down, keeping the lower spine imprinted. And ideally, you touch the foot and the head to the table at the same time. But because this is still a beginner program, lift the head up, roll up, and then you might even want to bend your knee, roll your lower back down first, put your foot and then your head down. Top loaded monkey, so move back. And then lift and stretch. The legs are apart here. You're pushing the bar up with your legs. You're pushing the bar up, but then you're pulling the bar towards you by bending your elbows slightly. You're lifting up, push the legs, bend the elbows. Imagine your chest and your face elongating along your legs. Now into shoulder shrugs and thoracic extension. Put one spring or two springs. So I've got two springs on here. You just want to make sure that you're safe. Make sure you're holding onto the bar there. If you let go, it'll fling up, which is very dangerous. Okay, so keep hold of the bar as you do the prone work. Scapular elevation and then scapular depression. Okay, reaching through the legs, imprinting the pubic bone down so the back of the legs are working, feeling your tummy engaged. The bar here is set up quite high, so that's why I've got my face hovering off the table. You might want to lower the bar down a notch and you can have your head down on the floor. On the, on the table, rather. And then thoracic extension. So from neutral, you're pulling the shoulders back and then returning. Tips of the shoulders draw into the spine. Breathe out to lift, in to lower. Reaching the breastplate forward as the tips of the shoulders draw back. You will be pushing on the bar to engage your core. The legs are reaching out, so you're lengthening out through the hip sockets. Beautiful mobility for the mid back. It's like you're lifting your chest off but keeping your ribs down. Bar behind head prep, bend, lift, lower and reach. And you just go within a range that feels okay for you. So you bend the elbows and then you lift up, reaching the breastplate forward, lower down using your tummy, lengthen out. Once again, you might want to set the push-through bar down a little lower. It is quite high here. And then into swimming. Okay, so keep the bar nice and steady, pressing the armpits and the hands down. Glutes are lifting you up. Ideally, try and lift the thighs off just as long as you keep your tummy and your buttocks really contracted. Roll onto your side, lift the bar up, and then hop off. Pole roll. Clear the spring end of the caddy. Push the vertical bar right up. And get rid of any springs that are against those poles. You're gonna lie on your back. There's no graceful way of getting into this. Shift your pelvis forward, grab hold, and then lift your legs up. You might wanna have socks on or put your 
tight around your heels just so you can slide onto the outside of the foot. The legs are in external rotation and your pelvis is hanging off the edge of the table. Coccyx is down towards the floor. You tuck under and you roll up, lengthening through your legs. Just do a height that you feel comfortable and then rolling through the spine and then drop the coccyx down, inhale. Exhale, tuck your tail under, squeeze your buttocks, reach up and then exhale, rolling back down. Tuck your tail under, lift all the way up, pressing your feet into the poles to activate the back of the legs. Keep externally rotating your thighs and then really posteriorly tilt the pelvis, mobilizing the lumbar. Lengthen out through the inside thighs. Even on, as you roll down, you want to keep stretching the legs up towards the ceiling. You really feel this in the back of the legs. Contracting your buttocks. So if I was to poke around your glutes, really firm around the back of the legs and the glutes. Bend your knees and then wiggle out of that, pushing the feet into the poles. We're going to do beginner leg springs. So roll onto your side. So please excuse my dishevelled look. This is the week that we found out that coronavirus was basically stopping the world as we knew it. So I was feeling pretty dishevelled, um, both physically and mentally. But, you know, getting into the studio and doing a workout always makes you feel good no matter what. Connecting to your body, going inwards and strengthening yourself. Really important. We're going to do feet and straps, so double hamstring lowers. Put your feet into the straps. Put your hands against the poles. Your arms are straight. Legs are straightened together, slightly bent. Pressing the back of the legs down. and then floating the legs up. Pressing from the back of the legs, you're imprinting your lower spine the whole time, tucking the tailbone and your sit bones up. Push through the hands, keep the upper shoulders sliding down so the upper trapezius are soft, targeting the back of the legs and the inside thighs, keeping the pelvis the lower spine imprinted and the pelvis posteriorly tilted. Quite strong on the back of the legs and the glutes here and then into frogs, heels together, toes apart. So just like you do on the reformer. Keep the heels out in line, parallel to the floor. And have a little moment there where you draw the heels, the calves, the inside thighs together. Push through the hands, push through the heels. Hands, heels and then inside thighs. Ever so slight tuck of the tailbone up so that you can imprint your sacrum and your lower spine down. It's quite strong on the legs, the back of the legs here. Circles, legs parallel. The pelvis is tucked up, the tailbone's lifting up. So we're going to do some in parallel each direction and then we'll do circles in external rotation in each direction. You can get quite strong on the upper body. You're pushing the hands into the poles but then you're imprinting your armpits once again up towards the ceiling. And this will activate your serratus. You might need to have a little breather here. I certainly did. Have a little rest and then into walking. All the way down, one leg, one leg, one leg, all the way up. Don't, to, don't worry about 
the legs too much in terms of like the distancing and the walking. You're just walking down for about five steps. You're walking up for about five steps. The, the main thing is the pelvic stability. Keep tucking and imprinting, only lowering the legs down within a range that you can keep the tuck of the pelvis, the posterior tilt so that you're lengthening through your lower back and activating the back of the legs and making sure that you're not like rocking left and right with the hips. Bicycles, lower one leg down, bend and return. Lower the other leg down, bend and return. You might want to put your arms down by your side if they get if it gets too much with your arms up against the poles the whole time. You can either do this imprinted. I like to do this in a neutral position after doing all that imprinted work. Otherwise, you can imprint work in the back of the legs, elongating out through the lower back as you lengthen out through the back of the leg and the inside thigh. The hips are not to rock left and right at all. So brace through your shoulder blades at the back there. Push through your arms. And then into beats. The legs are in external rotation, beating the heels together from the groin muscles. Really reach out through the thighs. Imprint the shoulder blades down, lengthen out through the legs. And then return. Side lie leg springs. Put the spring in the center eye hook. Lying side on, top leg through the strap. Bottom arm against the pole. The arm is forward of your torso and your legs are in line with your hips. So you start with the top leg in line with the hip socket, you lift and lower. Inside thigh, pressing the leg down. Inside thigh, reaching the leg out. Pelvic stability, the obliques need to work here to stabilize through your waist. Keep lifting your left rib cage off the floor. Lengthen and lower. The thigh bone is moving in the hip socket without lifting and lowering and hiking the hip. Then into side kick, push, push, reach. Stretch the back of the leg and then stretch the front of the hip. Kick, kick and support with your core. It's a torso stability challenge here, keeping your torso as stable and anchored and secure as possible as you move your legs in space. Circles. So 10 in one direction, 10 in the other. Keeping both sides of the waist long and lifted and supported. Energy streaming out through that top leg out from the sit bone through to the heel using the inside thigh as well to press the spring down. Bottom to top, so the legs are in external rotation. Keep the top leg as still as you can, lifting the bottom leg up from the back of the legs and the inside thighs. And then into beats. Squeeze. And then lower down. Other side, grab the strap, roll onto the other side, set yourself up so you've got your top foot in the strap, bottom hand against the pole there, and then foot in line with your hip, lift and lower, lift and lower. Pivoting around the hip socket as the leg abducts and then adducts, abducts and then adducts. It's quite challenging to keep the back of the body engaged here. Feeling the shoulder blades securing back and down, feeling the back of the legs engaged to lengthen out through the front of the hip. Side kick. If you're, too, if you're rocking around, if your hips are rolling forward and back, 
Then bend your supporting leg, the underneath side, just to give you more surface area to balance. Keeping the foot in line with the hip. Hinge at the front of the hip and then open from there. Thigh and tummy and then back of the leg reach. Kick, kick and lengthen. Pelvic stability, don't let your back do all the work there. You want to engage the back of the leg and the tummy. Into circles, flex the foot, lift the leg up, circling the leg around. It's a pelvic and torso stability challenge. So how fast and at what range can you move that leg, keeping the torso very stable. Using the breath, the deep out breath to engage your core. Beats. Lift the bottom leg up from the back of the legs, from the glutes, from the inside thighs. Draw the heels, the calves, the inside thighs, pinch your bottom together and then lower down. Well done. Take your foot out of the strap and we're going to stand up and hang from the horizontals. This is such a nice stretch. It is a lot in your hands. Okay, so just do what you can. I'll often put sticky mats underneath the hands there for people to grip onto. And then bend your knees, let your shoulders go right up around your ears. Imagine a weight around the pelvis and the weight is pulling and traction out through your body. So how did that workout go? I'm really looking forward to taking you through my next video. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date and get notified when it's released. And if you enjoyed the workout, I'd really appreciate you clicking the like button. Thank you so much. And remember, Movement is your medicine.